Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create some atmospheric lighting effects with volumes. We're going to go over a couple of different ways you can achieve uh, the effects seen here uh, with either a Pixar volume shape or with the Maya fluids. So the first thing we'll do is I've just created some geometry here and you'll see I've got a light in the scene already. And what I've got is a very simple abstraction of a room with a window. And so we wanted to fill that with the volume. That's very easy to do. What we can do is go up here on the render man shelf, right click, and we can just create a volume box. If we increase the scale of that to fit the room roughly, and then move our light into position, you can see, all right, you'll see that we've got a very thick volume where the light can't penetrate very deep. So we can just go into the attributes for the volume shader which you can either access with the Hypershade Editor or if you just select it, um, go into the shading group and then go to the source material. And what we can do here is we can adjust the density with the density color is an easy way to do it. If you just lower it to a, different, a lower value, you'll see that you still get this, the density and the light streaming through the window, illuminating all that volume there. And similar to the synth scene, um, synth room scene, you can see I could do something similar there. Um, with that scene, I didn't actually use a volume. I did it all in post, which I have a tutorial about how to do that as well. This method is a little bit harsh on your render times. So depending on the sort of scene you're setting up, you may or may not want to do this. If you're just doing a still, there's a very easy way to set it up though. Um, but I go into all the settings for the Pixar volume um, in the Pixar volume tutorial. So if you want to know more about that, check that tutorial out. I'll just put a bit of geometry there so we can get a better idea of what's happening. So the thing to note here is that your volume is actually being illuminated, not the, the walls as it may appear in the background there. So you can see this shape here is actually not receiving any illumination. However, we could get it to have a little bit more if we had multiple scattering enabled. However, you can see this is going to make the uh, scene very noisy. So in general, I would say do not do that. Something you won't be able to do with the Maya fluids is actually adjust the diffuse color. So if you're looking for a different color uh, volume for your scene, you may want to use this. But if you're just using a homogeneous volume like this, I would nine times out of 10 recommend using a Z depth as a multiplier and doing it in post. And I, like I said earlier, I've got a couple of tutorials on how you can do that. Um, it will just make your render times a lot faster because you won't be rendering all these little extra bounces of light and because it's usually quite subtle you don't necessarily have to have all this extra rendering happening. Now if you wanted to render a non-homogeneous volume which is to say that it has a gradient for example and you're not, you don't have a VDB what we can do is go to the effects drop down and we can just create a Maya fluid container like so and we'll just bring that up so this is the same scale as the box that I've got here and what I can do here is change this into a gradient and instead of making a constant a constant we'll make it a Y gradient so if we render this now it's also multiple scattering so you need to bear that in mind when you're dealing with your render times However, you can drop down into the shading lobe here and if you increase the edge drop off, you can see that that's going to soften the transition from the top to the bottom. Uh, however, we've got it set to cube, which we don't want. We want to set that to a Y gradient. So now we've got a thicker bottom and a thinner top. So if you're trying to make a nice spooky room with a little bit of ground fog like you'd see in some horror movie, this can be a really good way to do it. It does add a nice little bit of atmosphere to your shots, but again, a little bit render intensive. Now you can also affect the transparency with this transparency slider. I would generally recommend using the edge drop off for this sort of thing. Um, if you're using a non-gradient then yes you may want to use the transparency as well. You could also use the, if I just increase this back up, you could also use the opacity ramp like so and you can move this in to adjust the height of your opacity. So you can get something like that. Generally though, I, I kind of find it easier just to use the edge drop off. Um, and you could also have a bias, use a bias there as well. But usually one or the other is, is, is easy enough to deal with. Now I've just moved this cube down a little bit to show you something. What is What can be really nice is when you have these volumes to get these 
shadows cast within the volume by your uh, objects so if we select our light and we just scale it down and I'll set this to normalize so we don't have to keep changing the values what we can start to see is and I might need to bring this closer what we can t start to see is I've just turned denoising on here to make it a little bit obvious is these shadow fall offs that occur within the volumes so these are really nice if you're setting up sort of hero shots or that sort of thing or a spooky shot this can be a really nice way of hiding parts of the silhouette of your characters and just giving the overall scene a little bit of extra visual interest so you can see how you get a nice effect there and it doesn't have to just be on internal structures if i hide that and maybe hide that cube and bring in some extra geometry you can see how you get a little bit of extra detail on these buildings just because of the cast shadows from the outcropping areas so the variety that you'll get in your values overall in your shots will become a lot more interesting and you know you can set up these to do lots and lots of different things like i said you can have them set to be down lights and then you can you know have a subject in the uh, subject below them it's particularly good if you're using a spotlight for example so if we switch that to a spotlight you can see how you can really isolate aspects of your renders or you can see here you can add in the light um, as a little spotlight within your volume fog and create a prop out of it so there's there's endless possibilities here um, i think a lot of people overlook the fact that you can use my volumes or my fluids natively with renderman um, it's been in for a long time, but it's something that's worth looking at, particularly if you're just rendering up, you know, singular shots. You could use it for product photography. You could use it for hero shots, stills. It's really good for um, because this is non-simulating. Like it's not going to, you, you know, you can't affect it with um, geometry. Geometry can't collide with these volumes. You're not going to be able to use it for animation as more as realistically but if just looking to add a little bit of something to your shots like at the ground at the ground you know near the ground as a as a slight gradient upward uh, for that spooky graveyard sort of feel then this is a really good thing to add to your shots that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below